We're joined tonight by District Attorney Harvey Dent, who has graciously taken time out of his busy schedule to not only answer my questions, but uh, yours as well. So let's start, shall we? Why don't we start with the question that you posed in your opening, Mike? Am I an advocate for Gotham or, or just a publicity hound? Well, that wasn't exactly how he put it. But if I was after headlines, Mike, I would do more press, wouldn't I? I mean, weren't you the one who was criticizing me for not doing any interviews during the election? Well, that's true, yeah. Okay, then here's an answer to your question. Whatever decisions I make as district attorney will be made with Gotham's best interest in mind. The moment I fail to do that, no matter the circumstances, is the moment I become everything I stand against. Corruption, uh, brutality, total disregard for the law. To name a few, yes. Well, couldn't you ascribe those qualities to the Batman? Batman? Isn't that a little off point? No, I disagree, actually. I mean, I'm dumbfounded, personally, by the notion that a man who continues to take the law into his own hands, making a mockery of it altogether, is tolerated by both the public as well as the authorities. I guess the question we all want answered is, will you make this a priority to bring him to justice? Well, my priority is to help this city uh, return to a time when it didn't need a Batman, when the streets were safe and the institutions of government were right-minded. That sounds like good spin. It's not spin. You don't just decide one day to go uh, put on a disguise and go fight crime. A dysfunctional society dictates that response. So if you want to get rid of the Batman, then curing what created him is the best way. I understand that, but what if you sanction a vigilante to act as a guardian for a society, I mean, someone who willfully breaks the law, then aren't we in fact sanctioning lawlessness and chaos in the city? If the Batman bent the law to achieve some personal gain, you would have a much easier time uh, to get people to agree with you, Mike. Batman's actions thus far have been everything but personal. They've benefited the city entirely. How do we truly know what he's after if we don't get an opportunity to ask him? Well, let's just say there are plenty of other people uh, who are acting out of personal gain that I'm more interested in getting to know. You mean people like Sal Maroney, I assume? Yes. Well, since the trial's in progress, Mr. Dent, we obviously understand that you can't discuss the details of it at this point, so I'd like to open up the conversation to uh, a couple of callers at this point, if you don't mind. Sure thing. So on line one, we have Marsha Delinsky from Uptown. Marsha, you on the air? Yeah, hi, Mr. Dent. I'm a huge supporter of yours. Thank you, Marsha. I used to live in the Narrows, and I was fortunate enough to make it out okay during Dr. Crane's chemical attack. Now I hear Crane may be out there spreading the toxin again. What can you do to stop this? Well, what I will do is reopen the investigation into Crane's whereabouts. If Crane is dead like the authorities say, then we need to find a body. I don't think you will. So uh, I'm inclined to believe that he is out there, and finding him will be imperative. Dr. Crane's alleged poisoning of the drugs in Gotham is uh, clearly just another offense uh, and what we're seeing that it's a series of really bizarre and, and sensational uh, crimes being perpetrated these days. How do we counteract something that appears to have no known motive? Well, as demented as it may be, uh, I think the motive is to hurt people. And that's why this crime will be stopped and the perpetrators will be brought to justice. Caller 2, Brendan Palmer from River South. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm a cop, 16th Precinct. And you talk about bringing criminals to justice. How are we, the police, how are we going to do that? When you got your hands wrapped around our throats, you locked up six of my friends already with your IA crap. Well, and tell your me their names. Tell me their names and I'll tell you why I prosecuted them. I understand that a decrease in manpower makes it harder for you to do your job, but working with a group of individuals who break the law instead of enforcing it, that makes your job impossible. And to be honest with you, Officer Palmer, I feel a lot safer knowing that someone like yourself, whose name hasn't shown up in a file on my desk, is out there on the streets protecting me. You're a good cop. Albert Rossi and two others were apprehended by the Batman before they could assault voters at a local polling station. You're putting Rossi on the stand tomorrow to testify that he was a go-between for Sal Maroney and Roger Garcetti, now effectively tying the mob to the corruption within Gotham PD, as well as the violence against your own campaign for district attorney. Well, that's the aim. Aren't you opening up old wounds, I mean, from previous internal affairs investigations, I mean, that convicted huge numbers of, of the police department. Mike, my intention is not to cast suspicion over the entire Gotham Police Department. But when the corruption is so widespread, you have to go down there and dig down deep and root it out. Sal Maroney's conviction tomorrow, hopefully, would be the beginning of the end of that process. What is your working relationship with the police department right now? Commissioner Loeb was initially critical of my position. But now our offices are working close together, and there are several other police officials who are out there doing a good job, whom I trust. Like Lieutenant Jim Gordon and his uh, major crimes unit that we're hearing about. Yeah, we haven't had a, a chance to meet yet, uh, Lieutenant Gordon and I, but uh, I am familiar with his work, particularly in cracking down on the city's money launderers, which my office is aggressively prosecuting, and I anticipate sitting down with him soon.